Hi there, boys and girls. It's Mr. C here, getting ready to read chapter 13 of Fenway and Hattie. And with me here is my good friend, Stravinsky. He loves this book. He's a very good dog. Watch, I'll show you. Stravinsky, stay! Oh, that's a good dog right there. So when we finished up in chapter 12, Fenway was starting to feel discouraged that maybe Hattie didn't really want to play with him anymore, but he got an idea from the neighbor dogs that maybe it was the glove and the hat that are causing the problem. So let's see what happens next. Chapter 13. When we head inside, I can hardly believe my nose. The unmistakably wondrous aroma of spaghetti and meatballs is wafting out of the eating place. Saliva pools in my mouth. Yippee, it's supper time. But as Hattie hangs my leash on the hook, I swallow my excitement. I can't let myself get distracted. I have a plan to get Hattie back, and nothing will stop me. Fetchman hangs up his cap and the two fat leathery gloves, the big one over his cap, the smaller one over the leash. I watch Hattie and her swinging tail of hair rush into the eating place. My nose is overwhelmed by the savory fragrance in the air. I love spaghetti and meatballs. But I have a mission to focus on. I slink back to the door. Those gloves are up awfully high. I leap my highest. I stretch myself as far as my body will go. No matter how hard I try, there's no way I can reach. And sniff, sniff. Ah, oh, that spaghetti smells so good, and I'm so hungry. Take it easy, Stravinsky. It's just a book. I want to go beg Hattie to bring me some, but I can't get distracted. Getting my Hattie back is too important. I jump and jump and jump. I can almost reach the end of the leash. I try again, my jaws snapping. At last, I chomp on the clasp and give it a tug. Did Hattie's glove shift just a tiny bit? I look way up. It's slightly off balance. I have to keep at it. I'm about to tug some more when I hear food clattering into my supper dish. My tummy grumbles. Fenway, Hattie's sweet voice sings. I want to stick to my task, but my belly's in charge. I bolt over to the eating place doorway. My dish of sumptuous food is sitting in the middle of the wicked floor. Hattie's gazing at me with eyes full of determination. Fenway, she calls, come. I thrust my snout through the doorway. My tummy is rumbling. I look at Hattie with my saddest, droopiest eyes. I give her my best wine. Don't you feel bad for me, Hattie? I can't get to my food and I'm starving. But instead of bringing it to me like she's supposed to, she doesn't even flinch. She keeps on staring. Fenway, come, she calls again, clapping her hands. Uh-oh, something's wrong. Hattie's not looking at me with sympathy and concern like she always does. And she sounds almost commanding, convincing. I glance at my food, sitting there in the dish, smelling so delicious, waiting for a ravenous dog to come devour it. But that wicked floor stands between us. Talk about torture. I drop down and whimper for a long, long time. For all the good it does, Hattie keeps on calling me again and again, like I'm miraculously going to defeat the wicked floor, charge on in and gobble down the food. Why won't she just bring it to me? It's horribly unthinkable. My Hattie's changing like Goldie and Patches said she would. I have to get her back. I have to work harder. But right now, I'm famished and exhausted. I curl up for a rest. And then, everything changes. Hattie comes over and grabs the leash. I hop up. Hooray, hooray, I bark, pawing her legs. We're going somewhere. We all pile into the car. I'm so excited, I almost forget how hungry I am. Until I get a whiff of Hattie's backpack. Wowee, it's loaded with treats. Good thing I'm starving. I lick her cheek, then stick my nose out the window as we zoom down the street. My eyes squint in the warm breeze. When the car stops, my tail wags out of control because my nose is smelling amazing familiar smells. We're at that treat place again, where I'm going to get treats and see my new friends. Come on, come on, Hattie, I bark, clawing the door. Let's get going. We barrel out of the car, and I lead Hattie across the parking lot. When we get to the door, I see Lance and Yellow Lab from last time. Yo, dude, he says as we politely exchange bum sniffs. Hey, Lance, what's up? No idea, he says, and the look on his face proves it. Lance's human pulls the door open and we head inside. It's that same big room that smells wonderful. And the same dogs from before are there with their humans. 
Sadie, the very round beagle, is lying on her side like it's nap time, while Rocky, the basset hound, is trying to drag his human back out the door. Food lady and fetch man get busy chatting with the other humans. I steer Hattie around to greet my new friends. Wake up, Sadie, I say after sniffing under her tail. The treats are coming, remember? She raises her head with considerable effort. Trust me, honey, she says, I remember. But those tasty morsels better come easier this time. I've had it with exertion. When we get to Rocky, he's actually shaking. Relax, I tell him. There are going to be awesome treats. Fenway, you are way too happy about this, he says with a shudder. What's not to be happy about, I say, hopping up and sniffing Hattie's backpack a few more times. Is something wrong with your ears, Rocky? I said we're getting treats. He gazes up at his human like no treat could possibly cheer him up. I can't help but wonder why he wants to go home so badly. Does he live atop a pile of steaks? When the one human strides over, excuse me, boys and girls, When the one human strides over, the rest of the humans immediately give her their full attention. She obviously has some kind of power over them. Hattie takes in a deep breath, like she's getting ready for something. I'm getting ready too. I'm leaping and leaping, pawing her legs as she unzips the backpack. Hooray! Hooray! Those treats are coming! My mouth waters. My tummy roars. I didn't eat supper, but now I'm getting treats. A whole backpack full of them. Whoopee! I bark, dancing around Hattie's sneakers. I can hardly wait. Hattie balls her fist and holds it over my head. Sit, Fenway, she says. I spring up wildly, sniffing like crazy. Sure enough, a tasty-smelling treat is in her hand. I know it is. Give it to me, Hattie, I bark. What are you waiting for? Hattie looks rattled. Sit, she says. Fenway, sit. Yippee! I bark, jumping on her legs. I can almost reach her fist. I can already taste that delectable treat. But Hattie's fist remains closed, with that treat still inside. Sit, Fenway, she says again, her eyes getting watery. Sit, sit, sit! I nuzzle her hand in a desperate attempt to open it. I'm so ready, I'm so ready, I bark. Next thing I know, the one human is hovering beside us. She smells like lots of dogs and treats, but she also smells serious. And her voice is bossy. Hattie is completely focused on her. The one human finishes speaking, and Hattie nods. Then, with no warning at all, Hattie turns. She stares into my eyes, takes a deep breath, and holds her fist right over my nose. Sit, she demands. Her voice is full of conviction. Whoa, she wants me to do something. But what? Her posture reminds me of that time when I sat and the one human gave me a treat. I plop down on my bunk, my gaze never leaving her fist. When it opens, I'm not going to miss the yummy snack. Hattie bounces up and down. Yes, she shouts. And just like that, the treat falls into my mouth. Chomp! Wowee, is it ever tasty! I'm crunching and munching that meaty morsel in a state of pure happiness that ends all too quickly. Hattie smiles at the one human, who pats her shoulder. More, please, I bark. Hattie holds another treat above my nose. Stay, she orders, then takes a step back. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. Yes, she shouts again, and a wonderful treat sails into my mouth. Chomp, oh boy, it's just as yummy as the last one. It's another blissful moment of crunching and munching that I wish would never end. Fetchman and Food Lady are grinning. They pat Hattie on the back. Hattie smells proud, like she won a competition or a battle. They must be awfully happy that I finally got some food. And they're not the only ones. My belly is on fire. I can hardly wait for more. Hattie is totally distracted by Fetchman and Food Lady, which can only mean one thing, opportunity. I sniff my way over to Hattie's backpack. My nose tells me it's stuffed full with treats, and it's right behind her on the floor. I thrust my entire head inside. Wowee, this thing sure is loaded. I knew it. Chomp, chomp, chomp. I'm wolfing the treats one after another after another. I can't stop. And why would I want to? There are enough treats here to last forever. I'm in a bag full of dog heaven. Fenway! Hattie yells. Ouch! My collar is tugging at my neck, pulling me right out of the backpack. Hey, what did you do that for? I bark, wiggling to get free. Hattie's face is frowning. Her shoulders are heaving. She's struggling to breathe. Big, fat tears start sliding down her cheek. Something tells me the treat time is over. Uh-oh.
wonder what's going to happen to Fenway next. What do you think, Stravinsky? Excellent point. This guy. Hey, you guys have a wonderful night. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye, everybody.